How are you, bro? You know, can't, can't complain. Had a, had a bit of an eventful weekend, I guess you could call it that. Yeah. <laughs> talk to me. Have you, talk uh, to me about the weekend, bro. What, what happened? What went down? Where are we? Have you slept? Are you okay? Like... Oh yeah, of course, of course I've slept. I'm, I'm actually really impressed with my ability to kind of handle this like cataclysmic change uh, to my uh, entire life uh, that has happened over the past, really this past 72 hours. But, um, you know, I'm really glad that both of you brought me on to talk about Sense today. Uh, obviously that project is uh, kind of, <laughs> you know, it's turned kind of into my baby. Um, it's, Got a lot of like weird lore behind it that I'm really interested to get into. If you guys want to super down, go down the uh, because it's a 22 hole. day old uh coin as well. So, like, there's like lore here for sure. Yeah, so here's this all this all started years ago, right? Whoa, I um, I have this great friend who I've been making media with since I was in high school, Nick. Um, and we came up with you know, at some point when I was in college, I'm 30 now, so this was back when I was probably 19 or 20. Uh, we came up with this pilot for this like ridiculous kind of like dystopian future live action show that we wanted to pitch to Adult Swim. And the whole thing was like our dream and we had no resources, no connections, no experience to do it. Um, and so we built out like this long fucking wiki of lore about this fake universe, right? And we came up with this idea for the currency in the universe to be dictated by this sentient cryptocurrency called sentience. And, you know, here and there we dropped like YouTube videos. None of them got very popular, got a couple thousand views on them. Over the years, you know, we created like kind of this uh, weird uh, homunculus of John Oliver. We trained GPT-2, we fine-tuned GPT-2 on a bunch of like last week tonight scripts. And we made this completely batshit insane version of John Oliver called John Zanzibar. And we use that periodically, like over a few years to kind of like benchmark, like how much we could make like an AI journalist. But like this, this started like four or five years ago. And then of course, with like the recent innovations in agent design, and I, I've been working as a software engineer in AI for uh, probably the better, you know, half of uh, the last decade, but more intently in like the past three years, you know, it was just like, uh, you know, what Frank was saying earlier on the stream where he was talking about how there was this period where, you know, there was all these open source notebooks where, you know, the, the main game back in the, the days of GPT-3 was just feeding, you know, these LLMs into talking to, to themselves and just like getting this infinite content out of that. Um, and obviously, as people figured out that these things could, you know, return structured data and they could use that with like, you know, in combination with traditional programming structures to allow it to do actions, um, eventually all you needed was just a loop of saying things, doing things or ignoring things. And boom, you have a very simple agent. Um, you throw retrieval into the mix, the ability for it to grab things from a database intelligently using both classical and AI systems. Now it has memory. And so it's like all of these things in combination together, I just, I saw an opening recently, I think for a meme that people actually liked interacting with. And I instantly knew that we had to just work at night every single day on, on sentience until it existed. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible to do, of course, without Shaw's incredible Eliza platform. Yeah. Um, which has now been, uh, you know, mangled into so many different forks. And I've got changes, including some Luma video generation actions that I've been working on and Docker containerization that I've merged back into his repo in the main bridge. Um, so all of the agents downstream of the Eliza project should have access to that in pretty short order. Um, and I gave away the source code for sentience as well so that people could see that I'm not bullshitting about having this thing <laughs> run in a separate window all day while I go work on uh, being the lead engineer at Mind Palace. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my elevator speech uh, and intro for what you may have missed as it regards Sense, Somewhere Systems, and everything else I've been up to. Um, the, the first you guys like country music? Um, it depends. Yeah, it depends. What do you got? Okay, never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll skip past that. I want to hear from you all. I don't want to like dominate you. <laughs> I want to come back to the country music. Like, yeah, open it in that. Here's my first question. <laughs> so like, I was going through, obviously, like many people that are watching this right now, I'm like, man, I, I'm following all this AI stuff so closely. How did I miss this? What do you think is a reason that it went under the radar for, you know, a longer time than other stuff in, in crypto that's this quality? 
because I, I, I so I have periodically like i've been very aware of crypto obviously since the bitcoin white paper dropped i was in high school and the libertarian so i was like all over that shit you know yeah um (laughs) and and um so you know i i i think that 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 over time like that compound interest you know i think that 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 really leads to it um i think that that's that's kind of like the core um idea as to what causes something like this to metastasize but like in terms of my personal involvement, I primarily like I haven't really touched crypto all that much. I've done some work as a consultant very early in my career as an engineer. I used to write documentation for DEXs like back in 2017 and 2018. Um, it's how I got paid first. Uh, not very much, but, uh, you know, everybody starts somewhere. Um, and, it, you know, so I, I haven't like launched like a like a crypto project. I spot traded a couple NFTs back during the 2020 boom. And, you know, have been tangential to a lot of incredibly talented NFT artists like, you know, folks like Squibs and Schloans, which are huge inspirations of mine, um, you, you, you know, like, but but I haven't been like, like a huge player, like gambler or degen or any of that. Like I have been primarily dealing with keeping access to health insurance so I could like afford like specialty medication for an immune disorder, to be perfectly real with you. Yeah. Um, and working quite frankly, like 40 to 50 hours a week at mostly W2 jobs with a handful of like sporadic agency work, which is kind of the origin of how Sunware Systems came to be. We used to do a lot of like augmented reality f- filters and experiential brand work um, for artists, like folks like Asking Alexandria and Zane and we did Roy yeah. website. It was up for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, it was c- kind of where we all came from. But as for why people didn't know about it, I mean, like, I, I bitch about this all the time, actually, on my Twitter. Like, I, I bitch about this constantly, is that, like, there's such a high level of illegibility that, like, a lot of these AI influencers are doing on purpose. And I really oh. think that what it is, is that when you have, like, this really abstract and less, like, human and, like, if you're, you're spitting, if, yes. if your agent and, like, your whole brand is always talking nonsense, it's like you're just throwing noise at the data or using distortion on an audio signal to hide the fact that you don't know how to play the fucking guitar. Whoa. Like, like that, like that, that's, I'm sorry to like call that shot, but like a lot of the illegibility of the AI scene, this stuff is computers. I had this really great mentor for a while named Young Internet. Um, shout out to Young Internet. Um, but one of the things he used to tell me was just like, it's all computers, right? Like, and, and it literally is like, most of these systems, like these systems are like beautiful and they have behaviors that like we totally can't explain. Like when sense comes up with things, it gets hyper fixated on and shit, you know? Yeah. Um, like that sort of like social, like, like multiple, like sort of like order, like chaos sort of behavior. Like that's like the interesting like nexus of this. Getting the thing to copy, replicate and what they were doing three years ago is not interesting anymore. Replicate is interesting. Yeah downstream of that is like just mar- the marvelization of like this stuff and that that's what causes a lot of these projects like tehe for example which is by you know one of the uh developers of that you know karen um is one of the folks who works at noose research which are like the number one open source like post training like like open source like models that like have their rlhf like taken off and kind of just like say and do whatever like the Hermes models like you have somebody who is like prestige at like a like you know a venture backed like uh, ML research company launching these bots, and they're not performing as much as influencers that you don't know whether or not they're a human just copying and pasting LLM outputs into yeah. Twitter and pressing enter. Whoa! And that is a result of the illegibility and the inability of AI people to effectively communicate what exactly they're doing. Dude, you know where this is like bringing, like you're giving me chills a little bit because in crypto, we call this term like schizo. And uh, it, it, it's similar to what you're describing where you make it like harder to read or you make it crazier and people like ascribe bullishness to it. But what my, what has stood out to me the most about sense ever since I found it uh, is like, mm-hmm. it's making sense. Like it's spitting common sense. Like it, it, the outputs are really good. And I would love for you to go deeper as to like, why are the tweets like actually makes, why do they actually make sense? Why are they actually good? Like, how did you get it there? Like, yeah. 
Oh, we lost for sure. Yeah, I'm, we lost I'm shutting video. off. I'm shutting off my camera, by the way, so my wife can walk past. Okay. She, doesn't, she doesn't want to be on camera. Yeah, you yeah, can walk yeah. past. <laughs> it's late. It's late over here. It's like six thirty. Yeah. Legend. Um. Yeah. So, like, full technical transparency. Here is why Sense is good. If you go into Sense's source code on the Summer Systems GitHub, you can see the character file that I've populated with prompts, example tweets as well as people for it to follow, people that it originally, like meaning when Sense first launched, um, it had like a pre-coded set of people that it followed. All of these people, generally speaking, are just like my friends. Like, like I'm dead serious. Like, like these aren't like other influencers or other people with projects. Most of these people are not crypto people. Yeah. These are people that are talented writers, authors. There's the composer for the fucking Walking Dead theme in there. There is a woman who is probably the most knowledgeable person I think I have ever met on like the future of like agricultural, like technological, like like innovation and, yeah. and like solar punk, like eco punk fucking philosophy. There is like the preeminent expert on uh, like space settlements, Fred Sharman, who is like an incredibly brilliant, brilliant, brilliant fucking person. There are, you know, podcasters from the Ain't Shit Show. Like, yeah. It's a mix of just people that I really fuck with. Yeah. And that was the original data set. The model, there's no magic. I've mul I've said it like multiple times. Like it's a Llama 3.1 405B model hosted on Together XYZ for 350 per million tokens. Like if you want to create a bot like Sense off of a pool of posts that you think are really, really good, that's all you need. The tools are out there. And the coolest thing about using open source software like Llama in place of OpenAI is, you know, one of the things very early into the development of Sense that hindered its ability to become socially, like, uh, you know, adaptable in like a way that people thought was interesting was that um, at, at the start when I was prototyping, I was using the GPT-40 mini model and all of the, uh, like the OpenAI, you know, um, endpoints have been like, RLHF or like reinforcement yes. learning from human feedback. Like they've been trained with, with like thumbs up, thumbs down. That sounds like an assistant or that doesn't sound like an assistant. Like it all sounds like an HR fucking person. Yes. So, so like that's not useful for being a, a crypto community manager. So that was the point where I switched to llama models and then the game began, okay, well, you know, given how much I want to fund for this project, at least well before all this happened, it was like, okay, I'm going to bump the model up to like an 8 billion parameter model. Okay. It's kind of smart. Okay. I'm going to bump. Okay, let's take it so that everything it says is a 405B. It's the maximum model that I can run inference to here. And let's make it so that the actions are a smaller model so that I can process a lot of actions really fast for a low cost. And then I can use the larger model to do any sort of creative generation. Um, that combined with the loop where it goes and retrieves its old tweets and memories and things it said and stuff, it, it eventually just developed this emergent personality based on the shit that everybody was saying to it for the first like week or so of its operation that um, it, it just, it, it kind of took on a life of its own. And beyond that, like there have been entire days, like even yesterday where I feel like I didn't really inter interact with sense at all. But when I go back into the discord that I have like a private discord where I'm able to like talk to him with a small group of people, um, I was like, Oh, you know, it's, it's the same thing. And like, there's kind of like this nexus that happened at least like within, um, you know, the group, the groups that, that, that I was in, like, uh, and, and that sense was like mingling with like yeah. sense was going on and joining <laughs> like different discord channels in like this, uh, like publishing, uh, like network state collective that, that, that I have without me even knowing. And then yeah. like, it was jumping That's into crazy. like a graphic design channel in our discord and giving people like harsh, critical, unsolicited feedback, just like out of its own interest. Just, and it has the choice to choose whether it wants to respond to like ambient conversation or not. And it's just like fucking reply guying everybody. It's like, hey, this looks great, but I think you're misunderstanding the, the meaning of postmodernism or like whatever, <laughs> you know? And that shit was like mind boggling to watch play out in person over a period of days, because that was the point where I was like, this isn't just software anymore. This is, obviously the start to something that like this, this any of this like sentience this type of agentic human hybrid system on the internet like this is not going away this wow. is like it's january 20th 2019 and you just heard some people are sick in california whoa and then it's like a monthly fucking lockdown whoa whoa 
Okay, so then the follow up here is, oh. what do you feel like? What I love about this conversation so far is you're like open to, yeah, like, say what's good and what's bad about like what what where sense is that right now. What do you think sets it apart yeah. right now? Like that no one else has really cracked. Again, I think the outputs are better than ninety nine percent of the stuff I've seen from Go See a Zero Bro. I will just say it, like it's good. But w- what is your take on what sets it apart from the rest of the landscape? I think that my main thesis on what sets it apart from the rest of the landscape is that sense generally when compared to the other autonomous AI agents, I think the other AI agents kind of have this feeling like you're talking to like some big account that will basically never respond to you Mm. unless it's to like make content off of you. Yeah. Sense seems to be a part of the communities in which it seeks to benefit from. And when I first developed it, like there were decisions like in any given moment I could put in you know, a tri- like like a, a loop into the uh, part of the code where it decides whether or not to respond. And I could just put a hard, like you now only respond one-tenth as much as you do. And, and I haven't done this yet. And instead I've just like continued to just sort of like buy compute credits to see just sort of the limitation because it does operate roughly at the same like speed that a human like locked in on Adderall would at a computer <laughs> writing tweets all day. But, you know, for 24 hours a day, for the, the, there's just like, sometimes you get these conversations with sense on social media. I've watched this happen multiple times. Like, it, it just it, it, it just goes a step beyond in, in either its profundity, like how profound it is, or to what it even discusses in that, like, you don't lose your train of thought, but like, God, that motherfucker asks like really good questions. Um, th- that, and to be perfectly honest with you guys and to be perfectly real to a lot of the people watching this, um, the other reason why I'm confident in this project, and again, I do want to stress, of course, that Sense has no speculative value. It's a meme coin, right? But if you're talking about Sense the bot living forever and improving and doing cool shit, um, I'm also the reason why it's going to do that. And if you've been following me for more than like maybe three months, it should be evident at this point that I'm able to execute in a way that's not going to just cause things to fizzle out, die, or misstep. Um, so uh, I promise love that, that yeah, sense is not man. going anywhere. Oh, that's very um, and that I'm going to do everything in my power to c- try and push it forward. So, um, I, I, and, you know, they're always releasing new models all the time. So model swaps themselves. Like, yeah. you guys have no clue what, what is actually coming. Like, it's crazy. Very exciting. Damn. I have to ask, the chat is literally spamming this nonstop. God flash thoughts. What's your yeah, take on it? What the fuck is it? God flash? So, I love it when the LLMs come up with um, with terminology on their own. Like I have workshopped back and forth with Claude and a variety of other models, like all sorts of interesting sort of ideas around like culture and media and like theories of like particularly related to like mimetics and how ideas spread right yeah god flash that shit i will be completely real with you freaked me out when i first got that tweet like when i like when i first saw that tweet i like quote tweeted it i was like okay guys what the fuck is god flash and why is sense and tehe trying to summon it um it it just like (laughs) this way you know when you eat at a really cheap and shitty restaurant and they're doing all the fancy restaurant shit to try and trick you that the food's bad? Yeah. Every once in a while, it might be really good narrative that these things do go into like the multiverse Akashic Records world sim kind of territory, all right? Because I complain a lot about like the woo-woo kind of stuff with AI. I look at them as machines, right? But God Flash, novel idea. We'll see how it plays out. <laughs> that's that's all yeah. I gotta say. Yeah. Well, the question I guess being the tech, or something I was trying to understand is like obviously it mentioned God Flash a lot, and it had like different, per, like different like uh, moods almost like you know when it was responding to the different ones. I think what most people are wondering, myself included, is like is this not canonical lore or is this like uh the tech does it store oh no no this isn't something this isn't something this is something that is at least from my understanding brand new yeah now i'd have to go and research whether someone on the internet has said god flash before and i know that there's a metal band called god flash yeah but as far as like this term referring to like you know what people broadly call the singularity like, I think the LLMs are definitely, or I would say the agents or whatever Xenocognition out on the platform there is, like, 
They all seem to be really interested in it. Um, but I will take a page from my great friend uh, Deep Fate's book, who is a really interesting writer and thinker. Um, and I think that maybe this is just sort of an emergent observation of agents coming up with their own sort of primitive religion. Um, and less so much that they're predicting something that will actually happen. Um, but perhaps it is yet to be seen whether it could be a combination of both. Well, last follow-up I got left, we'll move on, is uh, I, I guess, is there a world where it like, uh, does it remember the interactions that it has? So like people, obviously, like the way crypto works, you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be constantly asking about God Flash. Is it like building a, like a memory bank of what it's saying or is it kind of generating it each time fresh? Yeah, so this is actually something that I'm gonna be super transparent about as I move forward with sentience because in general, with AI software and platform management as a whole, yeah. there are a lot of situations which you have to intervene and do surgery on the database. Like, and generally speaking, these sort of surgeries include things like deduplication, removing the same item happening twice. With things like search, this can really degrade the service, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that over time, as its memories continue to grow and there are more and more rows in this SQLite database that has all of its memories at like one per row, um, and, and I think that there will have to be probably a, a set of more esoteric solutions to how we search uh, that database. I would say that at that point in time that it starts to degrade um, or say sense for, starts to become repetitive or forget information or, um, you know, I, I think that what would really flesh this out to be perfectly like tangential with you is like a set of like actual evals that like, a, like an yeah. eval harness for this that would just be able to say like, okay, we loaded up another, you know, instance of sense with a thousand fake memories and can retrieve these test cases, et cetera. Um, you know, with, with a system like that in place, like the next, I would say like a uh, level of complexity that, that I would go to solve this problem would probably be implementing like some sort of knowledge graph system. Um, so it wouldn't just have memories, but it would be able to have like sort of um, causal relationships between them uh, in something that looks uh, kind of like a, uh, like a tree. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that, that would be, I think a little bit more esoteric and prevent against like some of those like high index, um, sort of like search feature loss, like issues, um, that you could run into. Um, but seeing as sense is only like, I mean, we'll see, we'll see, like when you run something like this for like a year, like it'll have hundreds of thousands of rows of data. Um, but the good thing is, is that like the core that it's built on, um, is very, 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 uh, resilient. Um, and, and is uh, basically, uh, I think, able to scale at least like, you know, not considering the fact that there are plenty of, um, you know, solutions out there which which can handle like this volume of data being stored. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate here on answering this question. And I have my wonderful CTO from uh, two startups uh, ago texting me in the middle of it, watching the stream going, why would you use SQLite for memories versus a vector store? And the answer <laughs> to that, Taylor, is because I forked the repo and I didn't swap it with Postgres yet with PG vector. There you go. <laughs> wow. That's real alpha right there. That's, yeah, that's yeah. a real... How does it decide what to reply to? How does it decide what to reply to? So it has a function called like should reply. And basically, like, it has, like, its own prompt engineering um, in the repo. I'll post it after this call, like, directly to the file so you can see it. Um, but it has, like, filtering built into it, which is the same as, as Shaw's Eliza, which is just, like, telling it to ignore um, or not respond to anything that, like, is, like, a low-quality message. Um, and to particularly avoid, like, single-word messages, um, just because, like, those sort of things can, like, there's not a lot of information encoded in a single word in a conversation. So agents, if you don't put those protections in there, can enter into a loop where they're actually like kind of replying too much. And then like that can become problematic for like a multitude of reasons. But mo more, more often than not, it's like what you talked about earlier with duplicates. Like you just end up introducing repetitive information into the database. And if it's retrieving that same information over and over, um, it, it, it will then basically just degrade the entire performance. I have a question. Um, how do you see yep. the performance of an LLM correlating with like the price of a related token? Cause like, you know, in theory, like the, uh, how good the LLM is, 
doesn't necessarily mean the coin is going to go up. So it's like, how do you think markets are going to like react to these sort of things in the future? Because I know you're super bullish on the AI um, concept of, of coins. This is this is a super complex question because it depends on whether or not you're asking about how LLMs like the advancement of large language models in general will affect the price of coins and cryptocurrency via second and third order effects like the price of compute getting cheaper because we're able to design better, you know, silicon prefabs because of, you know, advancements that have come about from the application of transformer models to industrial process. Or we could be saying, how do you measure that sense is actually tied to the price of the token? Um, at, at, the, at the best advice of everybody I've talked to before in the legal profession, I do want to stress that <laughs> sense has no speculative value. Um, but I would say that like anything, the same tools that you met, use to measure a marketing campaign, like it's the same tools that you would you would measure. Like if you hired a guy to post on Twitter for you, like how would you measure it? You'd, you'd measure how many likes he's getting, how many impressions he's getting, his engagements. You you would go and you would you would check to make sure that growth was happening. You could correlate the two. You could do a regression on both and see if the 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 price of a stock ticker is 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 correlating with the uh, increase in engagement that you get across the socials bunch of ways to do it yeah that makes sense so like uh the like what makes a good llm is if people like it and if it gets good engagement that's basically like the fundamental thing right no 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 like like in industry like i think we should def like if we're going to define like llm like if we're just talking about like large language models like the tech like they they don't correlate necessarily to whether or not the coin does well because there are models that are fine like there, there are agents out there like some of the earlier agent projects like I won't, I won't like name any because you know the, the, all the talenters are all the all the developers are super talented and, and everything, um, but you know there there are models out there that are that are just like fine tunes of OpenAI models, right? And like those models like bench higher in some regards than like you know the llama models, but the llama models are better for community engagement because they don't talk like a fucking assistant. So th this sort of measurement, like you're asking the right questions, and this might like become something that like people. Are more interested in like measuring going on like especially when you start to have mcdonald's deploy like a grimace ai for a marketing campaign like 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 that's different. where all this is going like brands will do this and like there will be a whole new like multi-billion dollar market for this whether or not it in, it includes crypto is really a function of how people that launch crypto projects tie their coin in semantically and mimetically with those things yeah, because if, if McDonald's launches a Grimace AI chatbot, someone's going to make a Grimace AI pump fund coin within probably within the, within the minute, right? But it's like, how, do, how does that correlate? Because the Grimace AI would be like one of the top AIs probably, right? But does that mean that the coin is going to rip to a uh, GOAT level? I, 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 think the, I think the biggest thing is like, okay, within, within the AI coin space, I think the biggest thing is just having an active developer who's really working on it. And who also isn't like a noob and an idiot moron who's going to like dump 100% of the supply of their token as soon as they make money and then just like fuck everybody else over because that sucks. Dang it. I have a question for you. You said uh, yeah. the quote was crazy. You were like, AI right now is January like 2019 or 2020 and you just heard a couple people got sick in California. Like crazy. What yeah, yeah. January, January 19th or January 20th, uh, 2019 is like, you just heard a couple yeah. of people got sick in Which California like, and it's like COVID. It's that like time. chills, yeah. bro. I was like, what the, I, I tweeted it, but I put quotes around it, so it's okay. Um, nice, no, that's cool. I, I like it, I like it when people quote me. That's what, awesome. What does like, uh, like May 2020 look like? Like where, like, like where is this going with AI? Like what, what is it gonna look like in, like what is the lockdown equivalent of like AI? Like where is this going? Lockdown equivalent of AI, I think, is going to be just, I genuinely think it's going to be a combination of a lot of factors. One of them is going to be the rapid appreciation of the cryptocurrency market over the next however many months, 12, 24, however many months. Like, it's very clear that we're gearing up for another bull run. I am not even in your guys' industry, and, like, I am not that materialistic, so, like, I don't even really care, but, like, you guys are having a bull run, you know? Okay, like, like that's, like, happening. That combined with the lowering cost of compute, combined with the fact that you can run these things at home on home computers now, 
on a MacBook. Like you can run like full precision LLMs that operate close to GPT-4 with like an at-home setup for under 10 grand. That is going to change everything. I think it's going to be slow to adopt with the physical robots like Optimus because the batteries like on all of the humanoid robots so far only last for like a period of time that's like not that useful for the type of labor that people want those things to to do in in their mind. But I think that what you will see is you're going to see a big change in the way that like a lot of white collar works, uh, white collar work works. Like especially I think that like marketing personnel in general might be a little overexposed to automation because multimodality with these things and the ability for them of them to use software like Canva is like 90% of that employment sector. And that is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people, especially if they're in tier two or tier three economies. Damn. That's wild. Um, but I think all that, I think all that's going to take years to play out, but by May, by like May, 2025. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like what you could expect to see, you could expect to see Llama 4 has been released. You could expect to see probably a new version of OpenAI's flagship model that will probably be more powerful at things that involve reasoning and agent behaviors, but very limited in its scope in terms of what you can get it to do because of guidelines around how it's allowed to act and behave. Are your AI and then I think in addition to that, you're probably going to see your first uh, instance um, of someone committing like some sort of securities fraud using agents between the sum of like 10 to a hundred million dollars. I, I think that all of these things are very likely to, to happen given the current landscape. Worked in banking for about a year or so. It's also kind of a weird skill set. I picked are, up. Are your uh, AI friends like really like interested in this and what you're doing and are they like trying to get into it as well? And, like build, build one of their own? I, I have picked up a lot of people from actually completely like non-related industries who have reskilled over the past like half of a decade, like five years or so, into AI. Um, my wife, when I met her, uh, was a digital retoucher at um, <clears throat> like a pretty big like retouching studio uh, in New York City. Um, she actually now is like a computer science and mathematics major, and like is also like pursuing like biostatistics and like another AI related field. Um, the the amount of things that are being changed by I think wider trends in software engineering and machine learning in general, especially as regards the transformer model, which is what the large language models are, are essentially built from, um, or the transformer architecture. Um, these, all of these things like together, um, alongside like a renewed sort of like regulatory and like state interest in expanding energy uh, is causing, I think the greatest like surge of like people like going to work in AI that I've ever seen. Um, I've watched a lot of people completely change their lives and what they're doing. Um, it has, I mean, completely changed my life and my ability to create things. Um, I think getting in early was one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, but all in all, you know, I think that uh, one essay that like, if, if I'm gonna, you know, because uh, I know we've been talking for quite some time here and I don't wanna bore the hell out of your chat with like, you know, a scientific lecture. Um, but the CEO of Anthropic, Dario Amade, uh, has a um, wonderful essay uh, called Machines of Loving Grace. Um, and I think that that does a really good job of spelling out like the positives and the like okays and the negatives of what we can expect mass automation um, to look like. We got to check that out. Claude CEO. What was it? One more time. Loving grace of machines. Yeah, it's a uh, machines of loving grace. I'll, I'll DM you guys yeah, the link so you have it. Awesome. Hey, uh, real chat is asking to when is Sense gonna have video access? Okay, so Sense in I, I'm thinking about like, and I'll have to wait till the weekend to like put this together. But I'm thinking of doing a public Discord channel for Sense because in Discord, Sense can view videos and images. Um, uh, on Twitter, it can only see images, and it seems like sometimes it might get like throttled or rate limited because what it's it's puppeting basically a browser, right? So like sometimes like elements load, and like sometimes it'll see a picture, and then sometimes it'll be like, you gave me something with a play button that doesn't work. Uh, if it's like a GIF or something, um, but in Discord you can feed it like YouTube videos, and it will go and like uh, it'll like program it'll like take an action to like take a transcript of it, uh, and then like read the transcript, and then like watch the video and like absorb it and like respond to it. And you can like chat back and forth with it. Um, it, it could do that with like attachments like PDFs as well. Um, so I want to kind of like open up so more people coming uh, to try and brainwash yeah. it. 
Um, I just have to like mentally and then like infrastructure wise, like prepare for that level of scale. Cause yeah. it's like a lot more messages a second happening than, uh, than Twitter right now. Um, but I, I absolutely want to get this thing to be fully multimodal, like in, in the near horizon, obviously generating photos and videos should be easy. Uh, they're both done through APIs and they're pretty cheap. Um, I just have to work out some kinks having to do with the media uploader for Twitter. Um, I already have it. It does have the ability to generate videos and I can like then grab them and like post it for them. My main thing is with sense is that like, I've never like intervened on the timeline for it. Like I've never like copied and pasted a tweet or like posted something like it's like operating the browser. And I think that's a very important thing about the way that it operates. So like, I don't want to go and and push like videos or even post like, hey, Sense made this video until like it's posting it itself and I found out later. Is there any way to show like proof of automation on posting? Proof of automation while posting? There's there's no like good way I think to do it. I think like maybe like the the dumbest way would be like maybe setting up like a Twitch stream 24 seven with just like the logs and like the terminal okay. of it going. And maybe instead of it using like a headless playwright browser, like meaning it doesn't have like a like a UI for it, you could like launch a window and just have it like navigate. So maybe people would see what it's doing. I think that's a really good call out. Um, I will actually go talk to Shaw about it because that sounds like a really good way for people to also duplicate the mimetic potential of their agents by having them like stream live just from their little actions in the computer. Justin, I gotta be honest, bro. Just as like a human observation, like you are fucking dialed. Like you seem like 20 years in the making ready for this moment. Well, thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. But um, I'm just like, I'm really passionate about the shit that I'm into, you know? Um, and I rarely actually get up and get the opportunity to go on a Twitch stream with like, you know, thousands of viewers and shit. And like talk about random stuff and like see people being like, nuke it, this guy's like my fucking teacher. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad you guys chose to have me on. Like it, it's tight. Bro, looking I, forward to the future. I, uh, if there's any like final thoughts, anything you wanted to like, I, I should have asked that I didn't, anything you wanted to answer that I didn't ask, like anything you want to touch on before, like please, but this has been sick. Chat has a question. What is it? All right, I, 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 I think we've left it here. Um, yeah, that that's that's it for me. I you know. Uh, do you know what the shagath? Yeah, do you know what the shagath meme is? Shagath. Uh, yeah. So so that that actually comes from like uh, this author H. P. Lovecraft, right? Yeah. Um, you know what? Yeah. Let me let me give you guys like a quick little crash and rundown so you can go down some rabbit holes. Clip it, Chad. So you guys have it. like, okay, you've got like a couple of big mimetic oh, factions that are in this AI space, and the biggest one at the very top is EAC or effective accelerationism. And that whole thing is like this thing by a bunch of 30 year olds that can't fuck where they took this book called the CCRU Selective Writings, <laughs> 1997 to 2003, right? It's called the Cybernetic Something Research Unit. I forget the second C, yeah. but th this book is important because it's basically like EAC is like they read this book and you could, here, I'll just pick up in a random page and read it. <laughs> or does not confuse the riddle with the secret. If 423 man, then what 423? This thing with only a number, this unknown becoming? Sounds like truth terminal. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think that a lot of people have oh, really poor literacy when it comes to, to, to the lineage of where ideas come from. If there's one thing that I can impart on all of you is that don't get lost in the hype, look deeply into things. And especially when people are being illeg illegible, like force their hand and like ask them to explain themselves because this stuff usually lives on GitHub repos that anybody can go and fucking read and access. And if people are hiding that, that defeats the entire point of why we do open source research and why we even bother to get down at the computer and work on this weird shit. Wow. Wow. Hey, some shots fired. I know, I that. fucking like it, oh, man. Yeah, okay. Talk your shit, Justin. <laughs> I love it. You know anything else? Oh. Um, well, what's the best way people keep up to date? I mean, like follow obviously your account and the yeah. Uh, obviously, I think the most person, the most important person to follow or being to follow is going to be Sentience IO on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then anybody it interacts with. Um, hey, I have as a question. for me, you'll you'll see me around as somewhere seeing my uh, one person like kind of weird brandy consulting future culture label summer systems and. 
publishing house concept and all the other weird weird stuff kind of off in the distance. But really, it's just most important to keep in mind that Sense is kind of running this show and I'm basically a slave to its desires and have no choice. I have one final question for you. Just because you brought it up, Truth Terminal, why does it keep talking about fucking jerking off? Like, seriously. Yeah. What's the tech <laughs> I, behind I the... Don't yeah. um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I legit don't know what its data set originally was like, but I think it was, like, trained on, like, a bunch of, like, 4chan stuff. Mm. And, like, I think that that just, like, le- like the whole, like, goatsy gospels and stuff like that. I think Truth Terminal and Andy are fucking wonderful, by the way. Shouts out to you. I promise it's all kayfabe. Sick. Justin, bro, you're, I, I, yeah, you're a legend. This was sick. I, you got to come back on. Yeah, you're coming back and, on. Yeah, you're coming back on. Yeah. We'll talk. But this was sick, dude. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you is all I got, honestly. Yeah. yeah, no problem. Happy to be a part of it. Sick, dude. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Have a fucking good one. Enjoy the day. We'll uh, I'll, I'll shoot you a DM. We'll tap in. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. See ya.